I started World Internet Summit. I was the original founder. And we'd take people in the Internet Challenge, bring them up on stage, but lottery draw. I say lottery, would draw a ticket. We'd give everybody a ticket when they came in. And they'd win money. And they'd win, you know, whatever we could create with a new project. But that's what we were doing. And, uh, you know, $34,866 within 72 hours, people took notice and they still do they're following that idea so quite naturally i became associated with internet marketing and uh, they began to call me america's foremost internet marketing consultant and i still make most of my income associated with that that is my profession my primary profession but what's happened also is in that I'd be going back, and I'd go back to Sydney another year, and I'd go back to Sh Singapore another year, Shanghai another year. Here you go. And, you know, of course, London again. You know, and, and every time I'd go back, I'd see people that were still about approximately in the same stage. And I said, I know what turned it around for me. I know what took me from being a university professor with maybe I was going to retire with an adequate income, but adequate <laughs> is not adequate. <clears throat> so uh, I knew it took me and it was Napoleon Hill. So I said, I'll start teaching them Napoleon Hill's work. It's public domain. Well, it worked fine whenever I presented it from the stage, whenever I gave my workshops, did my coaching. But if, whenever I gave anybody the book and, you know, I would say, hey, go get a book out of the bookstore or you can download this digital version for free on my website. Well, of course, the one I was giving away was the public domain work. You know, others have copyright things. And people couldn't handle it. It was it appeared to be racist, sexist, nationalist. In other words, this is ironic, I fit all three. But you had to be white, American, male to be of any count in the book as written. Well, that wasn't too big a deal for... Americans to read past that it was, you know, sexist language and attitudes. Only men were covered. There were four women that were mentioned to them and got their money by marrying it. Uh, and, and it's, but you go to somebody who, like, for instance, the Singaporeans, English is their second language. They don't even speak English exactly the way we speak it. And I'm not talking about accent or choice of particular words. I'm talking about construction because uh, they've adopted it from their native Chinese c viewpoint and concept. And now you get them trying to read that, and it undid everything. So, I mean, I could go on and on and on, but I'm going to wrap it up with this. What happened is I said, man, this book has got to be updated. It's got to have women. It's got to have different people of different nationalities, different races. It's got to be cleaned up, and it's got to have the modern spiritual component that we can put in there, we call it, under the guise of science, science has come to it, quantum science specifically, that there is only energy. The universe is movable with our thought. The observer affects the observed, and there is only one. And that's where I came up also with the term holo magic. Holo, the Greek word one or unity, and then magic, of course, is it's, it's stupendous how it works. So that's it. I, I decided I had to do it. And that, of course, has picked up, taken a life on its own, too, which I'm very pleased for. Cause it's in my heart. <laughs> it's fabulous. I, I, <laughs> I'm sitting here absolutely gobsmacked um, with, your, with your honesty and your mission. And I have to say, Ted, that, it, it, you know, I've read through think and grow rich a number of times and I did struggle with the um, with the with the, the male content and trying to have it actually speak to me I, I, I my goodness I what a wonderful mission and what a wonderful thing to do to uh, to rewrite it as I said to you earlier I have not read your book I was not aware of your book and I I'm sorry um, for myself <laughs> about that. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm so looking forward to, to getting into it and even more so now. What a wonderful passion and, and purpose, uh, Susan, don't you think? Absolutely. And, and I just love the book. I'm on my second time reading it. <laughs>